So this is a brooch, brooch findings on a piece of silver. Our hook is silver, our hinge is silver, our pin is nickel. But because the nickel isn't permanently attached, we can hallmark this as silver. I'm going to use this piece of metal for our brooch. Uh, what I do is I, I get the nipple, nickel pin stems uh, from Rio, obviously. You can get these from any of your jewelry suppliers. And I also get the little joint. Now, anything that's soldered onto a piece needs to be the same material or you won't be able to hallmark it. So for the joint, for that little hinge, it needs to be silver. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, they're only 50 cents a piece. And I like to get the nickel stems because they already have the little rivet in there. And they're stiffer than the sterling. And the fact that they're not riveted on, they're, they're just uh, sitting in this hinge. They're not a permanent part of this, so it doesn't affect the hallmarking. So the, the pin can be anything. Now, most of our brooches are made for right-handed people, which means on the back. The hinge will be on the right hand side and the catch will be on the left. So you, as you hold it up to your shirt with your right hand, the hinge should be next to your thumb so it's easy to put the pin in. Um, I have made them for left handed people, which is the opposite. So you put the hinge on this side and the catch on this side on the back. Um, it, it works either way, but the majority of them are made for right-handed people. Now, what I do is I will melt a little bit of solder on the back of our hinge because when you sit this on your metal and you go to heat it up, what usually happens is this little hint, the bunny ears get hotter than the base and as soon as the solder flows, it jumps up on the side. Well, we don't want it to do that, so if we tin the bottom of this and then heat the base, when the solder flows, it'll stay on the base. Now, another thing is our findings need to be on the top third of this so that it will hang straight. If you put your findings in the middle, you'll find that oftentimes the brooch will tip. So keep them up here in the top third of the metal. So you can see I've got my hinge with the flat part up in my third hand. I'm just going to dry out the flux. Two bits of hard solder on my solder pick. And I'm just going to heat this until the solder just starts to flow. So we want to keep it right on that base. So now we're going to quench this so that we can place this little hinge piece on our the back of our brooch. So we need to flex where our finding is going to go. And we need to position it so that it lines up with where our catch is going to be. So our catch is going to be over here. And I just use my uh, flux brush in the bunny ears to position it. So I'm just going to warm this up until the flux gets a little bit uh, dry, so it'll hold this in position. So make, make sure you have it lined up correctly. 
because once it's soldered you're stuck. So now I'm just going to circle the finding. We don't want the, to put the heat directly on the finding. Circle the base metal. The flux will go clear and the solder will flow. And when it flows you'll be able to see it all, over, all around the bottom of those bunny ears. So there, I could actually see it drop. Quench it, pickle it. When you pull your piece out of the pickle, have a really good look at your solder join. You should see the meniscus, which is the curve, uh, in the solder all the way around. You should see the curve between the piece and the base. If you don't, put another little piece of solder on there, flux, and go back and heat it again. The worst thing that can happen to you is to completely finish your piece, go to put your pin in, and have this bloody thing pop off. So do all of the hard work now. Okay, I haven't pickled it yet, but you can see my pretty solder join all the way around, so I'm happy with that. I'll pickle it. Now that we're happy with our hinge, put your pin in, line it up so that it's straight with your bunny ears, and put a mark on the other side, and this is where your catch is going to be. Now, we want this catch so that we, we actually have to pull the pin down a little bit to hook it in. But that, at the moment, is where we're going to put our catch. And we're going to make our own catch. I'm using 1.2 round wire sterling file the end flat and we're going to place it using our third hand. Now when you're putting your piece on a charcoal block make sure it doesn't have any flux on it. If it has flux on it where it sits on it it'll bite into it and it'll leave a mark that you have to clean off. So just make sure that your soldering block is nice and clean and for this catch, we want it to have a little bit of pressure holding it down against the metal. And the longer the piece of metal, actually better, because the third hand will be up and away and it won't take any of the heat. So what we're going to do is just flux around the base, small amount of flux, and one or two pieces of hard solder. So I put one piece of solder on either side. Now we're going to heat the base. We don't ever want to directly put the heat on our wire because if we do, when the solder flows and the wire is hotter than the base, it'll just jump up on the wire. So we're just going to heat the base and I'm just circling from side to side. Make sure that your solder is touching the wire and the base. The flux will go clear and when the metal comes up to temperature the solder will flow. And we're close. And I'm about 40 mil away. You can see the sterling is turning red, and that's fine. So there. Once again, we look for that nice curve between the two pieces with our solder. Now we're going to cut this about eight millimeters long. Just use your side cutters. And 
we're going to hang this on our block. So we've got the, the hinge here and our wire here. And we're just going to hammer this wire to half its thickness. I'll just shift this. I'm just using a goldsmith's hammer. And you can see that we've got our nice flat lined up with our hinge. Now, use your sanding stick and tidy this up and figure your length because you're going to have to curl this end around into a hook and uh, you can trim it at the moment. What you don't want is to trim it too short because then you'll have to solder another one on. Now we know that our hinge is going to hook on the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our flat round pliers, put the round bit on the bottom, and we're just going to curl that into our hook. Nice and simple. So now we pickle this, polish it up, and we put our stem in at the our yeah, our pin at the very last. While this is pickling, we can make our pin. And what I do is I always buy my pins long and I buy a hundred of them at a time. So what we want is the pin to just come to the edge of our brooch. Cut it with your side cutters. File the end and sand it and polish it. Now what you want is a bullet shape on the end and you don't want a very sharp point because what you want is the bullet shape to separate the threads in whatever you're putting it through. You don't want to pierce the thread. So just file a nice bullet shape, sand it and polish it and get an old t-shirt that you can test it on because you don't you don't want to test it on something that's nice. So just make sure that when your point is finished uh, it's nice and polished and it will actually push the threads apart and go through the metal fairly easily. So now that your piece is all pickled and pretty you can see that this round bit goes down and we just position it between the ears and gently squeeze it with our squeeze the ears with our parallel jaw pliers until this lines up. Now, if you're placing a piece of finished jewelry on your peg, put something clean on here, like a tissue or a paper towel, so you don't damage this when you're putting your pin in. So just hold it up and you can wiggle it around, get it so that both sides line up, give it a bit of a squeeze. Now you can see that it has spring pressure holding it up and that's the point of putting that round bit down. Yeah, and the pressure will hold that in the hook. So now we're ready to rock and roll. So you just hold it, hold it in your hand, put the pin in, hook it, ta-da, done.